Hey, this is Stu, and I'm here to tell you all about the all-new Magic Bullet Lux 5. Let's go ahead and grab Lux and apply it to this clip. We'll hit the Edit Look button, and we're in Lux. And right away, if you're familiar at all with Magic Bullet, you can see that we've changed up the look and feel of things a little bit here. Most notably, what we call the tool chain down here, where we add all of the cool tools that make Magic Bullet do its thing, is a little more compact and it's wrapped in these two tools here, input and output. And this is a part of an important new feature in looks called color handling. And color handling is kind of like color management, but a little easier to understand. It's really simple. I just select the input tool here, and I just go to this menu for gamma and pick the camera that I used to shoot this footage. So I shot this with a Sony in S-Log3, so I'm just gonna pick that among the many choices here, and you can see it immediately looks correct and wonderful. So that's it, that's color handling. You have choices of your input and your output, and you have a nice selection of tools here, so you can go S-Log in and S-Log out, and while you're doing that, you can preview with an sRGB lookup. And whatever you do here, it's described to you in the output tool section here, so you're never confused about what exactly is happening. I'll talk a little more about that later, but for now, let's talk about the other big change in looks, which is how the tools are organized. We've now broken up the tools into these easy to understand sections. We have selective controls, camera, oriented controls like lens vignette and haze flare. We have a whole wonderful section of color correction tools here, like Colorista and a couple cool new ones that we're gonna talk about. And then of course we've got our film section here where we have our film negative and film print emulation from Magic Bullet Film and the wonderful Renoiser, which provides some of the most realistic digital grain you can add to your footage. And all I have to do is click once on a tool to add it and if I go again and click on another tool, I add that, and you'll notice that I can add these tools in any order that I want. I can drop them in any sequence, and I can reorder them however I want. There's no more rigid camera model in looks designed to force you to use tools in a particular order. We've all learned a lot about color correction in the many, many years since Magic Bullet looks first came out, and the power of Magic Bullet lies in this kind of erector set of cool color correction tools that you can add and reorder to your heart's content. But of course, Magic Bullet is all about the presets and we've got some amazing presets here. We've got over 200, we've got a ton of new ones, and they're organized just how you kind of remember. There's the Blockbuster ones, we've got Blockbuster Cool, Blockbuster Warm, and of course remember if I just hover over them, I get a beautiful full screen preview of what they look like, and they're looking pretty cool. We have a truly overwhelming set of presets available now, so much so that we've added a really important new feature, search. So I can search for a look by name, like Greyhound, right? But that's actually not what's really great about this. What I can do is I can search by the feeling, like warm, right? And I'm gonna start to get a bunch of warm looks up in here. And I can start trying those out and seeing how they look on my footage. But I can keep adding keywords. So let's add colorful and maybe also color contrast. And now I'm starting to really pare down my selection to a few choices based on the keywords I've added up here. And if I'm starting to feel like I've pared it down too much, I can remove the keywords and expand the search again. We've carefully indexed every single look with a ton of useful keywords so just type whatever you feel like up here, and I guarantee you, you'll find something that's starting to fit what you're looking for. And remember, with any of these looks, we always have this strength control. If they come off the truck looking a little too hot like this one, just drop down the strength, and you're blending the look away. Dial it in exactly how much you want, or use the look as a starting place. When you apply a look, one of the tools will be selected. This is the tool that we think you might want to tweak and edit to your heart's content. So for example, in this look, it's one of the two Colorista tools. There's actually two in this look because one is doing the heavy lifting of creating the overall color palette of the look, and the other one is there for you to just do some basic color work. So maybe on this shot, we'd wanna just lift up the midtones a little bit or adjust the color temperature. And hey, look at that, there's some cool new stuff to play with in Colorista, but we'll get to that in a second. I'm getting a little ahead of myself because there's one more thing I want to tell you about. In the looks drawer, which you get at by just hovering over this looks button here. Let's reset our search term so we're back to seeing everything. There's also one more important button here. 
an import button. If you're sharing looks with friends and colleagues, you can import them right here. Remember, you can always add your own custom looks, save duplicates of looks that you've edited, add your own folder structure, keep your looks as organized as you want. Let's reset this look and go back to talking about this color handling thing because it's really important and really cool. Everybody understands that color management is an important part of color correction, but very few people actually understand all of the nuances of color management. And that's why we've added color handling. It's kind of like a lightweight version of color management. We're not doing any adjustment of color primaries. We're just applying this lookup curve to the footage. And the result in this case is that we started with log footage and we've effectively converted it to Rec. 709 by specifying its input as the camera that we shot it with and the format we shot it in, S-Log3, and output of sRGB. But there's a powerful new capability here that will enable professional colorists to use Magic Bullet with confidence inside of any color pipeline. And that, of course, is the ability to output to any of these gammas. So, of course, we can just choose same as input. And now we've gone S-Log3 in and we're going S-Log3 out. And all of that is explained right here. Again, for our sake, while we're looking at it, we can apply a simple sRGB lookup so that everything looks nice and contrasty. And let's just throw a little nice look on there. But when we go out, we're back in log. And that is essential for working inside of an existing color pipeline. So Resolve users, I'm looking at you. You've already got your color management figured out and looks can't always be the last thing in your pipeline. It's just a part of your color workflow. So you can go log in, log out, and everything's cool. And the extra bonus of that is that you can go anything in and log out. So if you're mixing and matching cameras from different formats, Magic Bullet Looks is effectively able to convert between formats by taking anything as input and sending it out in any format you like. And while we're talking about color management, I want to talk about HDR. Huge buzzword, everyone's talking about it, lots of different workflows out there for it. Magic Bullet Looks has been an HDR color corrector from the very first version. To show that off, I've got a piece of HDR footage here in After Effects, and you can see that in the viewport here, these overexposed areas, if I bring down the exposure, there's a little extra detail up there. It's, it's kind of nice. If I just apply looks, you can see the same thing here. If you look at our scope, you can just see that the pixel values exceed 1.0. This is an HDR image. There's nothing surprising or special about this to Magic Bullet Looks, and you could do this with Magic Bullet Looks 1.0. But what we do have for you is a whole new set of presets designed specifically for HDR. Now, this isn't necessary. It's just nice. For example, if I go to Blockbuster and apply any of these nice presets, they look great. But almost every preset in Magic Bullet Looks has some kind of S-curve to it. And that S-curve rounds off the highlights into a nice shoulder. And so what that does is it makes your highlights all stop at one. Now, if you're mastering for HDR, that's probably not what you want. You can just go and delete the S-curve and guess what? All your highlights pop up and it's fine. So remember that the presets are always just a starting place, but a really cool starting place for an HDR pipeline is to go to, for instance, the Blockbuster HDR section. This is a special set of new presets designed to preserve and sometimes even enhance HDR values. So let's apply this one here and you can see that our HDR values are still popping above 1.0. When you output this through a proper HDR pipeline and view it on an HDR display, you can see that we are preserving and enhancing the HDR values that are already in your footage. And again, Magic Bullet's new color handling feature can really help you with this. Let's apply looks to this clip and we're gonna identify this as S-Log3. And you can see what happens here is that as we map the log values into the video color space, we're taking that whole sky back there and we're turning it into HDR values. Now in the years prior to HDR mastering being a thing, you'd apply a preset and it would round off those highlights, give them a nice film-like shoulder and it would look beautiful. But again here, go to the Blockbuster HDR section, apply any one of these presets and you're still preserving those highlights. They're still there. And if you have an HDR display, you can see them. Pretty cool. All right, by now you've probably noticed that a lot of these presets I've been applying have new tools in them. Let's start talking about those tools. And we'll start with the all new Colorista tool. 
Of course, Colorista is a powerful standalone effect that you can use to color correct every single shot in your timeline. It's absolutely the best color correction tool available for your NLE, and you can use it in every one you like just the same. And we've updated the Colorista tool inside of Magic Bolt Looks to have a bunch of the new features from the standalone Colorista plugin. So let's give this shot a bit of a look here. I'm going to warm up the highlights and to no one's surprise, cool off the shadows. A lot of times the amount of this kind of look that you can get away with is based on how tolerant you are of the shadows becoming a little oversaturated, right? The more I push shadows towards cool, the more it starts to look artificial and just forced, right? This doesn't look realistic, even though I really like this teal color, for example, that I'm getting under the shadow of this building's eave here, it's not looking realistic here. It's getting all blocked up. Same thing with the clouds. I warmed up the shot overall, but the clouds are losing some definition. I could back off on this look a little bit, but the other thing I can do is I can use our new saturation EQ. Now, depending on your familiarity with other color correction systems, you've probably seen all kinds of complicated color curves for adjusting how colors and saturation relate to one another. The Magic Bullet ethos has always been to try to give you that same amount of power, but with fewer clicks. And we've long done that with our HSL controls. For example, if I want to take these blues and move them more towards cyan, I can just grab blue and move it towards cyan. It's easy, it's effortless, it's a single click, and it's been like that for years. But what we were missing was the ability to adjust saturation across the different values of luminance, and the different values of saturation. But now we have exactly that. So let's first do saturation by luminance. And what you see here is a group of seven sliders and they work like the graphic equalizer on your retro boom box. So this slider here is gonna control saturation in the shadows. So just with two clicks, I can calm down the oversaturated colors that my shadow adjustment was creating. So let's reset it to kind of remind ourselves what that looked like and just go in again and we'll just put a nice little curve of saturation here. And we can do the same thing in the highlights. We can just keep that aggressive yellowing from affecting the clouds. And you know what's happened here? Here, let's look at the original. I'm gonna hit the backslash key to see the original. Isn't it funny how now the original looks wrong somehow. The original looks a little too purple and weird. And this is my adjusted version. What before we thought was too extreme of a look, by just giving it this little EQ hump of saturation through luminance, we've dialed in a look that I think is fairly plausible. Maybe we just back off on the strength of the whole thing overall, or of course we can always just back off on the strength of the Colorista tool a little bit. This is an incredibly powerful tool, and instead of fussing with a thousand little tiny points on a curve, you've got it all in just a few clicks. And the same is true with saturation by saturation. So I'm gonna reset just this section here and I'm gonna start dialing down the saturation of things that are already low saturation. And then maybe I'll increase the saturation of the things in the kind of mid band of saturation. And that's getting the grass and kind of the golden light here. And then maybe I'll drop down the saturation of the high saturation parts. And what I've done here is I've dialed in my own kind of vibrance effect. And again, it's a different look than we started with, but it's still like a nice natural one. And it's bringing kind of like, I don't know, like this kind of springtime prettiness to this kind of grungy urban scene here. I really love these new controls. I use them on every single shot I color correct with Magic Bullet looks and Colorista. The other really simple but welcome change that you'll see in the Colorista tool is just a nice contrast slider. It's just a really beautiful and simple contrast adjustment. We've always had our lovely curves down here, which effectively have given us a contrast control just by scrubbing this contrast adjustment here. And you still have access to all of that. You can still adjust the midtones. You can add points to this curve to your heart's content. But of course, you know, we all just want a simple slider for contrast. All of these things work together. They all work beautifully. And believe it or not, these beautiful temperature, tint, and exposure sliders are also just newly brought over from the Colorista effect. So the Colorista tool is your heavy lifting, everyday Swiss Army knife of color correction. But of course, the magic of Magic Bullet looks is that it doesn't stop there. We've got some amazing new tools that I want to show you. The first one I want to show you is Hunity. Hunity is a fun name for a tool because what it does is unify hues. And this is an idea we've played with in Magic Bullet forever. We have, for example, in the Mojo tool, we've got things like 
blue squeeze and skin squeeze. We've always known that it can create a more pleasing palette for your image if we group similar colors together and make them all kind of match kind of a color model. For example, here in this shot, we've got a couple interesting things going on. First of all, the skin tones are all over the place. These guys, it's entirely possible they may have been drinking, and some of their skin is a little ruddy. And then here, Mark's shirt is this deep blue, and Lars's shirt is gray, but we've kind of color corrected it toward a blue. It would be nicer if they looked a little more similar. Right now, there's just a distracting amount of color in this shot, so let's apply Hunity. And the default settings for Hunity are all about skin tones. And right away, you can see it has a profound effect on the shot. So I'm gonna turn off the tool and go over to my scopes here and remind us all about the beautiful memory colors scope. And what you can see in the memory colors scope is that as we adjust, let's just say the midtones of the shot, if we move it towards pink, you can see them turning red. And that is kind of our warning sign. You know, it turns this thing red, this is great. That thing's supposed to be red. But people, when they go red, they tend to look a little bit ruddy. We want them, to fall into this orange zone here. And we can also see this here if we turn on the skin overlay. We have a nice new simplified button for that up here. And this is actually not that bad. And that's because I've actually sort of warmed up the overall mid-tones of this shot. But I'd still like their skin tones to just be a little more uniform, a little more grouped together. And by the way, these overlays work for folks of any ethnicity. So let's turn back on Hunity, and we can see now, <laughs> look how nice and evenly orange they are in the memory color scope. And you can also see the cluster of saturation around this central line. And it just happens to land right on the line that we sort of have denoted as the canonical skin color. And really we may have pushed this a little too far, but let's let's dig into how Hunity works because it's really cool and really powerful and it can do more than just skin tones. So what you're seeing here is basically a key. This is an area selection of hue and saturation. This inner box defines the colors that we are going to adjust. And this crosshair in the middle determines the target color, the color that we're going to map everything to. I can just grab this and move it. And if I move it towards pink, they turn more pink. And if I move it towards yellow, they turn more yellow. And you can see the selection change down here as well. I can also, of course, just eyedropper. So if I think maybe Mark's forehead here is the perfect color, I can just set that as the center. That went a little pink for me, so I can go back over here and adjust it. I've always got my full range of hues down here as a guide, but what's amazing is that you can see this hue saturation histogram, so you can see exactly what you're selecting. And you can see that it's working, but it's turning the stained glass window orange as well. And I can actually see where that moment is in my scope over here. You can see that little cluster of red, and you can see it's living within the box, right? So that this super saturated red is getting the same treatment as their sort of pink skin that I'm trying to turn more orange. Well, we can of course fix that. We just grab the top of the box and just slide it down. And then I'll just feather out that selection a little bit. So now let's turn that off and on. I'm unifying their skin tones, but leaving highly saturated red alone. So this is working great. And now I'm gonna add another one to work on their wardrobe. Now I could start again with the eyedropper. Maybe I eyedropper Lars's shirt and see what happens, or maybe I eyedropper Mark's shirt and see what happens. But let's look at the tool presets for Hunity. There's a bunch. There's one called Steel Shadows. You can see that it's added an extra aspect to the key, which is hue and lightness. So it's only working on the darker areas of the shot, and it's taking all the shadow regions and just turning them into a nice, even, steely sort of cyan blue. Let's turn it off and turn it on. In this shot, it's pretty subtle. It's not exactly what I want. So let's go back here and let's pick Blunity. <laughs> You'll never guess what Blunity does. Blunity is going to unify blue, <laughs> and it looks pretty cool. It's unifying hue a lot. It's unifying saturation not much. In fact, zero. So let's actually unify the saturation. You can see I'm bringing up all the saturation. Now I'll drag this target color down, and what I'm doing now is I'm actually adjusting. You can I can see my selection here, so I can kind of dial this in. I'm just going to kind of reduce and unify the saturation and the hues of all of these blues. And again, it's working great. I'm loving what this is doing. Let's turn it off and turn it on. And you notice how, by the way, the tool chips down here are showing you exactly what these tools are doing. You can see how this one is unifying a range of oranges and reds, and this one is unifying a range of blues and cyans. So I could reach out and grab more blue to get more of Mark's shirt. That's an easy one. And then I'll feather this so as not to touch red. 
But of course, we've turned the beer bottles cyan. And you know, as much as I love cyan, that just doesn't feel right. And again, the scope makes it super easy to see that. This vertical slab right here is the green glass of the beer bottles. And I can just adjust my selection so I'm not affecting that. So there's before Hunity working on the blue, and there's after. And let's just do a whole before and after of the shot. Here's the original, and here's the adjusted. So Hunity is a super easy way for you to have impeccable control over the palette of your image. But Hunity is just scratching the surface of the powerful color manipulation tools that we've added to Magic Bullet Looks 5. When we think about color correction, we think about creating an overall look. Sometimes we think about correcting colors, like fixing something that's wrong. Sometimes we think about, what if I could just magically take any color and map it to any other color. And there just aren't any tools that can do that until now. This is Color Remap. And what Color Remap does is it allows you to map colors from anything to anything, as many pairings as you want within reason. Now let's see how it works on this really tricky shot. Again, the memory color scope is telling us what our eyeballs can tell about this shot, which is that the combination of blue bounce light coming off of the swimming pool and pink light shadowing through this pool toy here have made our actor turn pink. And we would like him to be person colored. So let's see if color remap can help us. So I'm gonna create a new mapping. You can see I've got my eyedropper going here and I'm just gonna eyedrop his forehead and you can see what color it is. It's like this burgundy maroon color here. And I'm just gonna grab it and swing it more towards orange. And what you can see is a few things are happening here. We've done it, we've made him person color. You can see him turn orange on the scope here, but it did affect the colors of the rest of the shot. That's because the way color remap works is like putting pins in a three-dimensional rubber sheet of color. And if you only put in one pin, you're gonna kind of scoot the whole sheet around. And you can actually see that happening here in this 3D scope view, which is so cool. You can actually see a 3D mapping of all of the colors in your image, and you can see the effect that your remapping is having. So if I turn off this mapping, you can see the whole color volume kind of shift there. So how do we adjust his skin tone, but leave some of the other colors alone, or maybe even get a little creative with them? Well, the answer is we just add more mappings. So maybe we'll start with the water in the pool. By default, as soon as I click on this pool, it's mapping itself back to itself. So it's created essentially a rigid pin in the rubber sheet. And look at that. You can actually see that we show that to you with this little pin icon in between the colors. Whenever these two colors are the same, we show you a little pin here to say, yes, you're pinning those colors. And we can add as many pinnings as we want. So let's pin down the pink of the pool toy as well. So you can see I've managed to adjust his face, but his shoulder is still this funky purple color. So we'll add a new mapping here. We'll pick his shoulder, and again, we'll take that one and swing it back over. And we can keep doing this all day long. We can just keep adding mappings, mapping things back to themselves. And we can even do things like, well, you know what? Since I'm mapping the pool to something, why don't I map it to the thing I really want it to be, which is a slightly more saturated and maybe a darker version of blue. And now you can kind of see the crazy power of color remap. I can map anything to anything else and the results remain plausible and smooth. I've still got his skin in the right zone here and I've got everything else doing exactly what I want it. In fact, I can go in and get surgical with it. I can even add one just for his eye, which look how dark that color that sampled off his eye is. So I'm gonna brighten it up and reduce the saturation. So here was before and here's after. I like where we got with this, but there's actually another way to get to what I think is an even better result for this shot. So you may remember that we have a reference library of images up here. And if we select one, we can split between our current image and the reference image. And we can add a new reference image at any time by clicking this camera button that stores a new reference and I can set that as my reference. So now I'm comparing this original image to itself. Now I'm gonna add an old tool with a new name. This is now called Color Blend, and I'm going to just dial in this warm color here until my actor's face gets fully onto the kind of skin adjustment here. So now I've broken the whole shot in order to get him to be 
registering as properly kind of skin color. But there's still a nice range of values. And this is particularly tricky because this is shot on a Canon 7D like a thousand years ago. So, you know, the skin tones are not going to be really the strong point of, of this shot. But this is much better than it was before. So I've got him kind of in the zone. His skin is kind of ranging between orange and pink here on the scope. Now I'm going to apply color remap and I'm going to be sure to set it after the color blend effect. And now what I can do is create new mappings that pin down his new fixed skin tones exactly where I want them. But then what I can do is split back to the original, right? And you can see how completely different it looks. And I can map some of the spots in the shot that I wanted to stay the same back to themselves. So I'll go new color mapping and I can pick the pool and I'll just map it back to itself. <laughs> ah, it's so cool. All right, let's do the same with the pool toy. So new color mapping. I'm going to map the new color of the pool toy to the old one. And I'll do the same for the shadow of the pool toy here. So now, <laughs> somehow, I've managed to... Here was the original. And here's the new one. I've managed to adjust just the colors of the guy using this filter and use color remap to map everything back to itself. This is actually how I would tackle the challenging problem of, of this weird shot here now. Uh, and I really like these results. There's one more thing that you may want to do to tweak this, which is to turn up preserve luminance. Sometimes when you get a bunch of mappings going here, the effort to map one color to another can create funky little artifacts because you're just creating a little pinched mapping here. And sometimes you'll see that as a sharp little spike in your 3D graph here. So if I just crank up preserve luminance it just kind of like you can see it affecting the uh, the pool toy here it looks so much better if i just turn preserve luminance to 100 that way i'm really only adjusting the hues and saturations of the colors here's the after and just as a reminder here's what it looked like before what a transformation so of course color remap is used in a ton of the new presets Remember that as you hover over a preset, you get a live preview of it, but you can also see down at the bottom of the screen the tools that are used. There's a lot that are using Unity here and a lot that use Color Remap because it's a very powerful tool for building up an exciting look. But it's also really fun to explore just using it to color correct. Let's apply Color Remap to this image and you'll see that there are three default mappings. White mapped to white, gray pinned to gray, and black pinned to black. If we select the gray to color, we can just adjust the midtones of the image however we like. It's, it's just a color corrector. You can always click on this little arrow to reset the mapping so that the to color matches the from color. But let's create a new mapping just for the sky. So I'll eyedropper the sky, and I'll just start pushing the sky towards a richer, more saturated blue. Then I'll add a new mapping for skin tones. And those are looking pretty great in the shot, but we'll just keep them even a little more on the warm side. And just with those two mappings, we've gone from this to this. Pretty incredible. We can do the same for the grass, punch it up, make it look just a little more pure. And we can even take a dark gray color, like on her shirt here, which is a little bit of a warm version of dark gray, and just make it go a little bit cool. Now you'll see that that had an effect on the shadow side of her face as well. Now I could add a new pin there, and just fix that. But the other thing that's kind of interesting about color remap is that it works in various color spaces. So if you're having a problem or you just want to experiment, you can try out any of these various color spaces and the 3D cube will update to show you the new mapping. So let's try this in RGB. That's actually kind of cool because it's actually mapping the colors in a way that cools off all of the shadows of the image. I, I kind of like that, but it's not exactly what I was going for. So let's try LAB. That one's looking a little bit better. We also have YUV, IPT, and then our default. So it looks like the best option here is gonna just be to add one more pin. So with just a couple carefully chosen pins to hold the canonical colors in place, I've managed to radically adjust exactly the colors I want and stretch around the color space to create a smooth continuum of newly remapped colors. Here's before and here's after. Now I could talk about color remap all day, but I really wanna show you how it can do something technical as well as artistic. So let's apply it to this shot. And as you can see, we've got a few color charts in here. This was shot on 5219 film stock, and I've done just a bit of overall balancing with Colorista. Also, I've identified it as a Cineon log on the way in and sRGB on the way out. 
And now let's work with Color Remap. And you can see Color Remap is showing a mapping of the colors. You can see some of the stuff from the charts there sticking out as little swatches there. And you can actually see the overbrights that are sticking out the top of the color cube. Color Remap works perfectly well with HDR. And since this is log footage, it's actually being treated as HDR by Magic Bolt Looks. So there's overbrights out there in the window, which is pretty cool. But hey, look at this color checker chart. Maybe as I was demonstrating color remap, you were thinking to yourself, that could be a useful tool for doing some empirical color matching. Like if I had a color chart and I knew exactly what colors it should line up to. Well, we have a preset for that. So I'm gonna go up here and apply the color checker preset. And what you'll see is a bunch of pinned colors that just happen to line up with all of the colors in this chart. And now I can go through one at a time and pick those colors. So I'll start with the brown, go to the pink, and I'm just going to go through them one at a time. And the grayscale is where it really gets interesting. And hey, look at that. I've completely removed all of the characteristic interestingness of this film stock. Let's turn it off and turn it back on again. Kind of cool and certainly a useful thing to do with just about any piece of footage you have that is required to be technically correct. But you know what I think is also just as cool? We can do the opposite. Let's reset the effect and start over with that same preset. And instead of picking the from colors, let's pick the to colors. And this gets a little weird but go with me on this. So I'm gonna grab the color on the right side here. And what's gonna to happen to the image as I do this is it's gonna start looking weird. And that's because I'm creating a mapping that reflects how this image is different from the canonical colors of the chart. It's not a correction that is designed to be used on this footage, it's drawn from this footage. So it's gonna make this shot look odd. But that's okay, because now I have something kind of magical. Now I have a magic bullet looks preset that represents the difference between this beautiful piece of film footage and the canonical chart. So let's go ahead and save that as a new tool preset. And we'll just go to one of our other shots here and apply color remap and then go and get that preset. And look at that. I've got an emulation of a film stock that I made myself just by shooting a Macbeth chart on a piece of film. And you could do the same yourself. It's pretty cool. It's a powerful tool, and I think a lot of people who make lookup tables are gonna to want to avail themselves of it. And speaking of lookup tables, I wanna show you something awesome. We've done a major revamp to the LUT tool inside of Magic Bullet Looks. So I'm gonna identify this footage as S-Log3 and go over here to the LUT tool. And what you'll see is a beautiful visual preview of all of our LUTs applied to this shot. And just like picking a look, if you hover over them, you see the result applied to the shot. And I've even got some third-party LUTs here from our friends at Triune. I've got their cinematic LUT pack going on here. But you know, there's a little bit of a problem, which is that these are their red log LUTs, and this shot is, you know, S-Log3. So if I apply one of these, maybe it doesn't exactly look the way I'm expecting it to. Well, we've got a new control in here called LUT Gamma. You can set sRGB or same as input, or in this case, I can go down to red log because I know that these LUTs were designed for red log footage. And now this LUT looks correct on this S-Log3 footage, as would any of these others. You can import LUTs just like you can in Colorista. In fact, you share LUTs with Colorista, and Colorista now allows you to save LUTs as well, which means you've got a powerful system for modifying, adjusting, cataloging, and visually browsing your LUTs inside of Magic Bullet Looks and Colorista. Magic Bullet Looks can do so much more than just a LUT, but it's also now the best and easiest place to browse and use your LUTs. There's one more awesome new tool I wanna to show you inside of Looks. Let's use this footage from Tokyo here and let's go to Channel Mixer. Channel Mixer is something you may have seen before. It's a convenient way of controlling how to blend the R, G, and B channels into a finished combined image. So by default, red is at one for red, green is at one for green, and blue is at one for blue. And that produces the same image out as we took in. And you can just sit here and adjust these, and you can have a lot of control over how your image is remixed out of the color channels. And it can be a little unpredictable, so we've made the sliders color-coded, which really helps get more predictable results. And you can get some really cool 
crazy kind of cyberpunk looks out of this. I really love the results you get. And look how cool the tool chip is because it shows you how the colors are being so wildly remapped. Yellow is becoming magenta, green is becoming blue. In fact, we had so much fun with this tool that we created a bunch of really awesome presets for it. They're here under synth and you've just got to try them out. Look at this crazy stuff. But it's not all just for crazy applications like this. It's also for fixing technical problems with footage or making beautiful black and white. So if we switch to monochrome, you can see now how red, green, and blue add up to create a final image. And you get to control how much of each are used in the final equation. A lot of our new mono HDR presets use this tool to create their black and white look. Now there's just one more thing I have to show you about Magic Bullet Looks, and it's one of my favorites. I've saved it for last. It's so awesome. We now support tangent control hardware for color correction, and it works all through Magic Bullet. I've got my tangent element here, and I'm just gonna start grading my shot, adjusting shadows, midtones, and highlights all together, using both of my hands together in concert to dial in exactly the look I want. This works with the tangent element, the tangent wave, and the super affordable tangent ripple. Of course, we've still got our trackpad mode that turns almost any hardware control device into a touch surface for color adjustments. But every colorist knows nothing beats the trackballs, and a lot of our professional colorists already have these on their desks. Now Magic Bullet Looks can join in the fun. But what if you want to control more than just shadows, midtones, and highlights? Hit the B button on the element here, and you can see the red control light up under hue and saturation. The left trackball controls the hue versus saturation, and the center trackball controls hue versus luminance. The outer ring advances me through the different controls. What can I say about this feature? I'm sorry it took us so long to add it. We've been wanting to do this forever and I'm so excited about it. It's a part of the overall story of this version of Magic Bullet looks between the color handling, the hardware surface control, the powerful LUT browsing, and the amazing new color manipulation tools. We see Magic Bullet looks as more than just a collection of hundreds of beautiful presets that are cataloged and indexed with all new keywords. We see it as a powerful color correction tool for everyone from an amateur Amateur to a seasoned professional. It fits into every color pipeline. It's the most powerful color tool you can get, and it's actually still amazingly fun to use. I'm so excited about Magic Bolt Looks 5. Thanks for watching.